Seat belts fastened. Check. Fuel valve is on and guards in place. Okay, cyclic and collective frictions are off. I got full and free, full and free on the collective, full and free on the tail. Collective and cyclic frictions are now on, pedals neutral, rotor brake is disengaged, all circuit breakers are in. Actually, I've got one that's out, which is item seven. What's PA? Uh, it's a personal address, which is uh, we don't have. It's uh, actually been. Okay, so that's fine yep. then. And the other one you often find out in this machine is the iPad fan. Yep. Uh, which is this fan here. Yep. Which is going to blow cold air in your face. So I'll often, because it's hard wired to a circuit breaker, I'll often have that one out as well. Okay. All right. All oh, circuit breakers in. Cabin heat. Uh, we, I don't think this one's got cabin heat. Uh, yep, so we've got cabin heat uh, down here. Okay, cabin heat is off, anti-ice is off, <coughs> and avionics and generator switch is off, and off, and altimeter is set, and hydraulic switch is on. Battery and strobe switches are on. Igniter key to enable. Okay. Make sure the area is clear. Yes, it is clear. Okay. Fuel cutoff is all the way off. Throttle is all the way closed. All right, you're you're happy. Beautiful. Now, one there's one additional thing I like to throw in this checklist. It's not on the Robbie checklist. It's not in the flight manual. Yes. We have here a three-way uh, switch on our uh, temperature. So yep. degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, and volts. Yep. Because battery uh, strength is our real weakness yes. in any turbine. I like to have a look at our volts. Yep. And so we can see here, we've got, you know, this should be a 24 volt battery, we've got 25 volts in it. So we can be pretty comfortable that we're going to get a good start out yep. of this. Yep. I'll check the voltage. If you've got this switch, which we do, yes. check the voltage. Yep. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. So now we're going to hit the button, wait until we get to 15%, introduce fuel. Yep. Watching this one making sure we don't get a, above 850 degrees if it's above 850 degrees we're going to pull pull the mixture pull Beautiful. the mixture okay um it should stable out at about 720 yeah, degrees which is what i did it's pretty uh, it's pretty timid the only caveat i'll put to that and again this is the same limitations as a jet ranger and it's fine for us now because we're cold yep but we need to tick two boxes here before we tip fuel in yep 15 percent n1 Yes. And less than 150, in our case, MGT, measured gas temperature. Yep. We have to have both of those before we put fuel in. Yes. If we had been flying, we'd just shut down and picked up a passenger and we're going again, we might find that uh, we turn the battery on the sitting at 300. Yep. Uh, what we would need to do, 15%, wait for this to hit 150, and then go. And of course, as we're hitting the starter, this temperature is decreasing. So we might find scenario where we might have maybe 18 or more N1 here Yep. until this gets to 150. Yep. It has to be 15 and less than 150 before we put fuel in. Yep, yep. But when you've got a warm start, obviously the 150, below 150 degrees is the prerequisite. 100%. Yep. yep. And it's only 150 during the start sequence. You don't have to sit here and wait for it to get to 150. Yep. Um, as we saw when we did the Jet Ranger training, is that when we hit that starter, we see the temperature come down that starter motor is producing cooling air yep uh, well starter motor is spinning the compressor which is providing the cooling air we see that temperature come down yep and that's why we have to wait 15 tick less than 150 tick fuel can go in then monitor okay all right make sure this is well clear i oh, know it's a pen in the back side all right all right we are all clear on the left and behind okay pressing the button 10 12, 14, 
15 below the end. Oil pressure increasing. Yep. Blades turning. Monitoring. Good start. First one's about 690 degrees. We can hear the engine accelerating, so we're comfortable that it's not yep. hanging. We can see the N1 increasing. Oh, uh, N1's... Maybe just get those pedals a bit more neutral. There we go. 50 degrees, there's 60%. Beautiful, we are self-sustaining. Self-sustaining. Stable at, uh, at 60 through 63 percent. Okay, I'm going to close my door here. And we can smell that exhaust yep. uh, there today. What that tells us is that there's actually a little bit of wind behind us. Yep. Uh, if we had a, a, a pretty decent tailwind when yes. we're starting up, we can expect to see a higher MGT in this, or TOT if we were in a, in a jet ranger. Yep. Because that hot exhaust can't escape from the exhaust. Yes. It's being blown back in by the wind. Yep. So we can expect to see a higher temperature on start. So it's preferable if you've got a hefty wind, point yourself into the wind, or in, in essence, don't have the wind behind you. Yes. Uh, because you might have a higher uh, attempt. Okay, generator's on, avionics switch is on. I've put the nav light on. Again, we can see on we've got uh, positive charge on our uh, ammeter. Yep. We can also see on our voltmeter that now we've gone from our oh, 24 at the conclusion of our start. Yep. Now up to 28.4. So we can be comfortable that that's working. Yep. Okay. Check the enunciator panel. Beautiful. So hold it in for a bit to get low fuel. Yep. And most importantly, the EMU light is not flashing. What's the EMU for? EMU uh, is the engine monitoring unit. So it's recording um, some of the engine parameters and outside uh, external parameters. Yep. Uh, and in essence, it's a maintenance tool, uh, there for recording exceedances. Yep. Doors are closed, so we're going to check our circuit and collective frictions are off. And we're going to do a hydraulic systems check. Okay, hydraulics are there. We've got no hydraulics. Hydraulics are back on. Focus, we just want to come smoothly up through it. Right through until the throttle is fully open. The horn, uh, the uh, low RPM light goes out at 97 on the way up. And with throttle full open, the N2 and uh, rotor RPM should see it at the bottom edge of that green. Yeah, that's... And I'm very happy about that. That's, that's just about right. I don't yeah. need to beat that. Chris said to do that at the bottom. If we were doing, uh, and then what it actually calls for is a deceleration check. And now your checklist doesn't actually talk about that. No. But in the book, uh, it talks about a deceleration check if you know you're going to go and do auto rotations. Yep. And um, we should be doing a deceleration check at the end of the flight. Did, has Chris talked to you about a deceleration check? No. Let's do one now. Okay. So what we do is we beep the RPM to 100%. So I'd like you to beep it up to 100. Okay. Beautiful. So there's 100 middle of the, uh, between the red lines. Yep. We need to make sure our N1, for this check, our N1 is 80% or more. Yep. So it's about 80% there. Yep. And so we want to close the throttle rapidly yep. and count the time it takes for the N2 to come back to 70%. 
I should double check that. Um, but it should be no more than three seconds. Okay, coming. So rapidly close the throttle. Okay. And count. One, One two, two, three. Okay. Beautiful. That's our deceleration check. The reason for that check is we're making sure the engine doesn't flame out on us if we're doing auto training. Yep. Uh, of course, now we've beeped it to 100. Before we pick up, we want to beep it back down. Yes. And bring it up to full power again. That should come in back into the middle of the range. Okay, so give it two beeps down. What do you reckon about yep, there? That looks pretty good. Now, the other check, and not on your checklist, are there, the N1 deceleration check, yep. as desired. Yep. Um, what you don't find here is this Robertson Service Bulletin, which talks about on our maintenance release as the R66 SB39 hydraulic systems check. But yes, we did that. Uh, no, that is an additional hydraulic check. This is the one where we do it full noise. We bring the cyclic one inch aft. Yep. And we go rapidly two inches forward. And we're making sure that there is no resistance in the hydraulic system. So it should be nice and smooth play all the way through that range. Yep. So we bring it back one inch yep. and then go rapidly forward two. Yep. And it should be nice and smooth the way through. If it's not, we have an issue. Yep. And that check is fine. So that check we do as a... Uh, interesting that it hasn't found its way even to the Robbie checklist. It's now found here. Right, oh, okay. Hydraulic system check, pre-takeoff. All right. All right, we have information, Charlie. Our pre-departure, pre-pickup checks. Yep. Warning caution lights are all out. We can check that again if you feel the need. Yep. Uh, our needles are joined. Yes. And they're sitting at the bottom of the green. Yes. Altimeter set, temps, pressures are all normal. Fuel is sufficient. Everything in here is good. Uh, if you desired, you can go back to temperature. Ah, uh, we're right. Uh, we've got frequency for now, frequency for next. Yep. Uh, oh, How do you set this? Uh, our code. 0100 and our mode yep. on alt. So uh, how do you adjust? It's a touch screen. Yep. So we can tap on and go 1200 zero, zero, or okay. uh, uh, come back here, Goose. Um, I can hit the VFR button. So if I was 001 zero, zero, for yep. the SNA code, I can say squawk VFR and it'll yep. go to 12. Or I can hit it again and it'll go back to its okay. last name. All right. Aston Ground, helicopter November Echo Juliet with details. November Echo Juliet. Helicopter November Echo Juliet is Hangar 7 request clearance to taxi to tower pad and then MCG with a 17 departure received Charlie. I probably would have taken a northerly departure. November Echo Juliet taxi to tower pad cleared MCG, not above 1,500. Clear to taxi to the tower pad and then MCG, not above 1,500, November Echo, Juliet. So if you're looking at that wind sock, a subtly departure or 17 is going to give you tailwind. Oh, right. Now that might, you might um, assess that that's suitable, or yep. uh, you could change your mind and ask for an orderly departure. Either way, he's giving you a taxi clearance, so we can... Uh, uh, squirrel, helicopter at Hangar 7. Make sure everything's off, we're good. ...to Bulky Bridge. Uh, via runway 17, I received information, Charlie, 2BOB. Uh, Lamar, for near the 66, uh, also at Hangar 7, taxi with tower, pad hole on the apron, cleared multi bridge number 1500. Yeah, I'll just hold on the apron, uh, wait for the 66 to go, and then uh, taxi to the tower, pad clearance to multi bridge number 1500, let's off India. Uh, Essendon Tower, Helicopter November Echo, Juliet, I'd like to revise for a northerly departure rather than a southerly departure. November Echo, Juliet.
S1 Tower, helicopter November Echo Juliet's ready, tail pad. November Echo Juliet, tail pad clear for takeoff, make a right turn. Tail pad clear for takeoff, make right turn, November Echo Juliet. right now we can use anything up to a hundred percent for five minutes yep what are the limitations uh, uh, other than the five minutes on using that more than max once, once you're above 83 percent torque you can't go any higher than about 63 65 knots bingo that's exactly what i was looking for and we can see here 65 knots above 83 percent yeah, torque. Like yeah. Already. i've taken the opportunity to do a little bit of um Reading on the PLH. Yep, beautiful. Let me reference it, tap back, please. 